the our view of is this the same thing our view of right and wrong no it's not because we okay. didn't really talk about that okay so we want to add the idea of what standard do we have for what is right versus what is wrong okay how many people in here have ever watched a movie or a television show and heard someone <laughs> uh, heard someone say that person is not ethical have you heard that before? I mean, yeah. maybe not I've heard it in real life. No. Right? I'm like, that's wrong. Yeah. In a doctor's and, office. And really what that means in a, in a movie or TV show yeah. is not what it sounds like. What that means is that person is not acting like I would act or how I would think this should happen or this you know, should take place. When you hear someone say that, they're not acting ethical, it's because they don't agree with you. They're not going to make the decision that you think they should be making. In reality, they actually are acting ethically most time. Even if they don't understand that they are, most of the time, our actions can fall underneath one of five main frameworks or standards for ethics. So get ready to write some more. Mm. So take out your notes, and you're going to write a few. This will be quick. I usually don't do this for ethics, I have to. All right. The first ethical standard is called utilitarianism. What's that? Like, so oh, are we not? Already write that down. I was yeah. like, she's the one that's supposed to like teach that. Are, are we? It's okay. It's okay. Trust me. Okay. I'm the teacher. She'll be okay. <laughs> You're gonna give her credit. Uh, the utilitarianism. And it was created by John Stuart Mill and a guy by the name of Jeremy Bentham. And it was created in the 1800s. And the idea behind it is more utility or happiness versus less utility and unhappiness. You maybe have heard people say for the greater good. That's where this comes from. And oftentimes, bad people use utilitarianism to their advantage. If they're doing something, they'll say, yeah, but I'm, I'm doing this for the greater good, Ooh. right? Or you might hear somebody say, uh, the ends justify the means, right? So this is the standard by which they are holding to. Not everybody who uses utilitarianism necessarily is bad. There is a time and place for it, but that's what you see a lot of times, okay? Number two, the rights-based approach. Now this was created by Immanuel Kant, K-A-N-T, and John Locke, and this was created in the 1700s. Oh, do we need right. to know the dates and the people? I would. Okay, it's in the book. It will be right? helpful for you when you're writing those little small paragraphs that are not quite expanding enough. Small paragraphs. No. Come on, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is funny about the study guide. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> because they all have to be rubric, and that's like. I know. No. I there's a standard. What the crap? All right. Um, that's not the problem. This it's... is rights based. Con, uh, this is the rights based approach. It's by Emmanuel Kant or John Locke. This is the 1700s, and it's based on what we would call natural rights. Uh, the right to know the truth, or just to know. The right to privacy, not to be injured. The right to be able to communicate or to have freedom. I'll say it all again. The right to truth, or just to know. The right to privacy, not to be injured, to communicate, and freedom. There is a little side note, so put a little bubble next to this, with a little arrow that points at this. The, there is another sub-entry that you need to know about. It's called the deontological approach. Mm, spell. D-E-O-N. T O L O G I C A L. Dion means 
duty and not the kind you step your foot in. <laughs> duty. <laughs> you did a duty. What? Uh, duty, D-U-T-Y. Work. This means that you are going to be judged by the letter of the law and how you follow the law than by the outcome. Can anybody in here tell me who might follow this particular approach? This is the subset Billy. of the race. Who? Uh, the Billy, the one, this is about the Billy man. <laughs> the uh, Billy so, so Captain Vera, absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely, right? Is Captain Vera is a what? He is a person. Good. Can, can you repeat the definition? He's a captain. What is a captain? Yeah. <laughs> You're judged okay. by how you follow the law, not how what? How closely you follow the law, not the outcome. Okay. How closely? He's in the military. Military personnel are often judged by this standard. How closely you follow whatever procedure, process, what someone tells you to do. Captain says you got to do this, then you got to do it, even if you disagree. Is there anybody else in society that might follow this? Uh, uh, mm. a, a judge. A judge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. A, a cop. Yeah. Uh huh. A cop. Yeah. A policeman okay. would, would do Definitely this. Definitely a cop. And this is actually what is at kind of the stink nowadays, right? Uh -huh. Is you know, do you follow the way you've been trained and what you've been told to do? You follow all the steps, even if it's wrong. Do you get in trouble for it? And starting to change and we're starting to move away from the deontological approach towards something else yes that each person still has that still must follow what the law is but they also are judged by their actions and the outcomes of those actions mm -hmm. um, so it's changing today to some degree all right so the third uh, framework is called fairness and justice and this is in the second and third century bc Typically by uh, Aristotle. What was the date? Second and third century BC. The fairness and justice approach is interesting because a lot of times, uh, we've talked about it in here before, it's not based upon a standard that everyone holds fast to. It's a standard in which each family, so I'll give you an example, is um, one family, the husband is killed by an intruder and the wife would like very much to have justice, right? To be fair, we're gonna cut your head off. The person who's there or, or like whatever, right? And yet, for another person, they might be like, you know what? I forgive you. So it's Justice mean... could be forgiveness for that for another person, yes? They might see it as that, and I've seen this happen oftentimes where the person comes in, hugs the person that killed their spouse, and you're like, how could they do that? Right? I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. I've never seen that happen. What's that? I've never seen that happen. I've seen a dad almost kill a man in a courtroom. Oh, you guys want me to post one of those ones? Where, I mean, it, it's so sad. Like, I mean, I fall over when I see it because I'm like, how can yeah, you I could never. do that? But some people have the ability. For one person, justice might be a million dollars. For another person, it might be ten million dollars. So should we write both? It's no, justice, it's just, whether it's violent or peaceful. Uh, it's fairness, whether or not it meets the standard of the individual. Fairness. Right. Just the standard of the individual. What is just? What is something that you deserve? What is the you know? And sometimes we have a level of justice when we talk about the law, right? But then if you read the law as a strict interpretation of the law which is like the letter of the law you're going to come up with a different viewpoint than someone who reads about a loose interpretation or spirit of the law right so what's just it was true justice for one person might not be true justice for another person are you all with me on this mm -hmm. um and it's very 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 difficult um, so that would be, uh, and I also think this is, I'm going to read this to you. It's going to sound so weird and stupid. Okay. But listen to what I'm saying. People who are equal should be treated equally. And those treated unequally should also be treated unequally. Yeah, I thought that was stupid when I read it too. 
right? I don't get it. What's their station in life? What's okay. So, right? So, so life is here. So it's saying you should only be treated equally if, like, you're a CEO and another CEO. It all depends on your station, which is so really, really weird, right? Because it's just for that person. Now, you got to remember when this was written, folks. Right. Right? I mean, stop for a second. We're not saying that we necessarily go by this, but this is kind of their discussion. Uh, when All right, so let's go to the next one, number four. Uh, a lot of times people confuse utilitarianism with this one. This is called the common good approach. And it's not that we're looking for good, right? We're not looking for the good. What we're looking for is a full flourishing of everyone in the community. The, the community itself is moving forward. It's not about good or bad. It's that there's progress. Are there people in society that will not benefit immediately from this? Yes. But in the end, will they benefit long term? Yeah. Well, that's the goal, right? Because it's the full flourishing, the moving forward. All right. And then the last one is the virtue-based approach. We've talked a little bit about this, the idea uh, of those seven cardinal virtues. And there's a whole bunch of different virtues. In fact, in your in the writing and the reading that uh, Michaela, you're the one that did the reading, mm -hmm. is that right? The, in the reading, she gives you a whole bunch of other virtues. And for those, I would, I would challenge some of those. Mm -hmm. Those are like modern virtues, right? Uh, things like courage, charity or, or love, hope, faith, wisdom, uh, justice. You basically, you, you work on one of these things in hopes that life will become better for you all the way around. All the virtues will benefit as you go through this. All right. You have to know this because now you're going to have to ask the question in every document, every movie, and every question in your study guide, what ethical approach are these people trying to use? I have a question. Huh? Every question? You have a question? I said it, every question? That's, are sure, you adding absolutely. that? Your, oh, I mean, no, no, I'm asking you, are you yes. adding that to the rubric? Do we no, have no, no, to do no, that? I'm not adding anything to the rubric. Okay. I'm telling you. Ask you're yourself that. About this, ask yourself okay. this question. Okay. Because, Just making sure I don't yeah, want to leave anything out. One of the things that you said, which is so true, it is difficult. Why is it difficult? Because it, we didn't really kind of go through this. We didn't understand what this is. And now we have to ask questions. Okay, in, in Ms. Ever's voice, right? What ethical standard is being used by each individual? They're not using one for everybody. They're using one for each individual. What's that? Are you asking? Or are you, is that rhetorical? No, I just, they were talking and I was trying to figure out. Oh. Because if I'm talking, you're not talking okay. because it's rude, right? So we want to make sure that if I'm talking, you're not talking. If you're talking, guess what? I'm not talking and no one else is. So please don't do that. Um, and if you don't like it, sorry. That's the rule from day one. Right? Everybody get it? Good. Um, so in this, that's what we have to continue to ask. It doesn't matter what document we're reading in Unit 3. What ethical standard are we using and why are we using it? Is it the best ethical standard we could use? Is there a better one? How do I come to terms with what is the best choice in my ethics? I mean, how many people in here, when you go to the store, think, I'm gonna buy this soda, but I better stop for a moment and think ethically about the choice that I'm making? Almost nobody in here is gonna do that. Who in here likes to buy clothes? or boots, or shoes, or whatever, okay? How many of y'all, when you go to buy your clothes, stop for a moment before you go to the store and think ethically about the decisions that you're gonna be making? But what no, I think, I think as I pick up each thing, I think, I do. Yeah, do oh, I'm not, not talking about thinking. Because I do the same thing, I'm like, do I like it? Do I not like it? Oh. Do I, should I, do I have money for this? I mean, there's those things, but I'm ask, actually asking, Ethically speaking, do you run through the gambit that's underneath each one? If the utilitarian approach, is there going to be more good than bad? For who? For you. Oh. Say, why, for your family, what? for whomever else that you're around. If, it, if it's me, so I'll give you an example. I go to the gas station. I look at the candy bar. I like candy bars. 
When I think, I, this is what I think of, mm, I, I should get that. Do I have enough money? This is usually the first thing. Number two is, is it going to be tasty? <laughs> yes. Do I tasty. want it? Yes. yes. That is not thinking ethically. That is saying, I want that. that. Those are the things that we say and we do do that. Here's the ethical side of it. I walk in, I see the candy bar, and I ask myself the question, what's going to happen if I eat that candy bar right now? Nothing. Well, if I've got diabetes, it will. Yeah. Let's just say I don't have diabetes. Let's say that I'm eating a candy bar every single day, and I'm thinking about this as I'm eating it. What's going to happen, like the little pebble in the pond? Mm. It may not happen right now. It may not happen in five days. It may not happen in five months. But I guarantee you the ripple of the effect of that thing is going to have an impact on me. You buying clothes is going, to have an, is going to have a ripple or an effect on you eventually because you're spending money and not saving it. You may create habits. What am I doing to my family when I eat that chocolate bar that I probably know I shouldn't eat at my age? What eventually am I doing to my family? Something? Yeah. Is that good? I mean, I mean think about this. Thinking ethically really does mean thinking deeply. And not rationalizing where you, you should have it or not should have it, but literally stopping for a moment and trying to figure out what is this going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I think about this, what ends up happening is I don't think about the utilitarian one. I start thinking about my family in more of the common good approach. And then I'm like, man, I shouldn't have that because I want progress for the entire family, and I, that's not going to happen if I'm not here. Now, how many times have I made the right decision and the wrong decision? I made the wrong decision lots. Want to know why? Because I'm thinking about what I want, what tastes good, right? What's in the moment because I have fallen in line with today's standard, which is me. What's in it for me? I want me, right? That's what I'm judging it by. And what I'm saying is, I think why this is so difficult for many of us is we don't typically use frameworks thoughtfully. We might fall on ourselves into them, but I don't know that we actually use them all the time. That's... So, actually, yeah. Elaine. Um, I have a different approach. I don't know if it's the same, but does it fall under thinking ethically? Like, my family, we avoid certain foods that are bad for us. Like, if you were to go to the store and buy a Okay, so add, let's ask everybody else here. Let's ask them what they think. Which one of those five ethical standards is that falling? It does fall underneath one of the five ethical standards. It's not a new mm -hmm. standard. It is, actually falls underneath one of the other ones. Which one do you think it falls under? Common good. A lot of times it falls under the common good because you're wanting society to be better about the choices that we're making, right? So you're not going to support whatever. Kind of we talked about chocolate before. That, was that in this class? Yeah. We talk about chocolate about whether or not we want to buy chocolate that's been made with slave labor or whatever else, and so we buy that. So and it falls underneath the common good. It could also fall underneath the virtues approach. Um, so as you're kind of going through this, it's not that we have stuff that's new, the way that we make our decisions. I just think we need to classify them, like which one is best. And then we have to figure out, is the status or the, the, uh, the structure of the ethics I'm using, is it the best one for this situation, right? And it's something we call situational ethics. And it doesn't mean that I, and it's so dangerous because I can actually, in situational ethics, what I can do is I can choose what's good for me, that's gonna benefit me, and I can misuse ethics. But for every single thing that happens in our lives, there isn't one standard that you're gonna go by that's only gonna be that standard. Even if you're a religious person, you know, the ontological approach, are you ever gonna wonder what the outcome is gonna be? Or only just following the law? Religious people follow the deontological approach, the duty-based approach, where it's about following the law versus the outcome, right? But how many of you in here just follow a law and don't worry about the outcome? 
mean, some of us do, and then some of us look at it and go, well, I'll do that, but what about, what's going on here? Is there, is there another way I can do it and still meet the, the same end? I don't know. It depends. I know a guy that was in the news, I guess it's probably 20 years ago, uh, he went and killed a, a, an entire family. And according to the reason was that in the Old Testament it said this, these people that practiced, I think they, they all saw themselves as like wicked witches or whatever. And he killed the entire family by stoning. And he says, look, the Bible says this. I follow this. That's what I do. Would you do that? Are you going to go kill? And this is one of those things we have to ask ourselves. Do you follow it really? Do you follow it letter of the law to go ahead and do this? Think about the Quran and some of the more fundamental people that are out there who actually literally believe, well, if I do this, this is what my reward is, this is what I'm going to do. If you think about other folks who, I know of a guy who really struggled with this. He's like, if I'm supposed to be with God, why am I here on the earth? And he tried to kill himself again and again and again because he wanted to go ahead and get to heaven. I'm pretty sure the Bible says something about you're not supposed to kill yourself. Because then you can't, you don't go to heaven. Yeah. Is that what it says? It's, a, mor it's a mortal sin. You, you, you should, you should uh, find out where that is and bring it in. Okay. Um, but, that's not, but that's not even the issue, right? I mean, people, people do this. They rationalize in their mind about what the, this is, and they follow it without even thinking of the consequences or anything else. It's, it, the whole purpose is, what are you following? Do you not think about anything else? Are you going to go ahead and do this? So each one of these really does matter, and you have to figure out. And so I'm not going to get into the rest of it. But as Michaela jumps yeah. deeper into this inside of her document, there actually is a discussion. How do I choose the right one? Right? And that's the most important discussion as we go through this. Um, all right. So today we're going to go. We did the activity. Um, we're going to start with Miss Evers' boys. Caroline. Caroline. And uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have ten minutes. So, live feedback on this, just real quick. Uh, great job on, on bringing us something that isn't necessarily already in the, I mean, part of it is, but not what you gave us. And so, getting something new is really important for background, and yours is about a minute and a half. So, I mean, worked out really, really good. So, kudos to you. Keep going. And my first question is, which ethical standards from thinking ethically the doctor Douglas and Dr. Breda's So um, I think from what the from the what was shown in the clip that we saw, I think Dr. Brodus and Dr. Douglas used the utilitarian approach because they didn't like it, didn't think that it was ethical, but they it was their only option to save more people to let this this group to risk this group's life. Yeah. 
the gum the or the um good of the many over the good of the few. But I guess it could well I don't want to take this answer from somebody else. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Good job. I appreciate that. So I agree with what she said, but um something that I feel like I could point out was that the right um whatever the right views or how do you say um is like the complete opposite of what they were using that no like to know the truth and to know like have the right to know and everything is like the complete opposite of what they were using. Mm, yeah, so you, you're explaining what they didn't use. Yeah, like the complete opposite of what was, yeah. I thought I was, yeah, I feel like it was almost like a time to get it too, because like, even though it was like, a, you could get it to wait like six to 12 months, but if they would have got the, the little, the, I guess the vaccine or whatever, in the six months, it would have been good for all. It just wouldn't be, they didn't need to wait. That'd be good for everybody, not just them. You know, it would help in the future, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me, let me help you out just for a second. Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so never be afraid when, and I say you're the alpha in the room, you are the alpha in the room. <clears throat> if someone doesn't answer your question the way you've asked it, you can stop them and say, that's not what I've asked. And you can come back, you don't have to be mean about it. You say, well, that's not what I've asked right now. What that's that maybe for later. I appreciate your response. And then rework the question back because what we're starting to have what started to happen in the last two is we started spiraling out towards something else that was not your original question, right? right. And so we want to make sure that we get the answers for the original question because there are more than answers. And I, I appreciate Shannon not actually going through all of them. There are actually more than just one framework here that's possible for these people. So now people in here, you need to figure out what that is. So it's okay for you to go ahead and say, well, that's not what I'm asking, but I appreciate you helping me, you know, doing that. And you can go ahead and bring it back to the question. It's the one of the hardest, it's the second hardest thing. The first hardest is actually giving good feedback and crystallization to the people who are answering right after they answer. That's, that's the, the most important thing, right? Yeah. Uh, because what we want to do is nod our head, say yes, you know, do some kind of weird, quirky, uh, word like my word that I know that I say way too much is absolutely. Um, I don't know where it came from. I used to say awesome all the time, right? But I've tried to work my way out of those words through time because they're fillers that we give when we give people. So as you're asking that, think I got to give good feedback, right? And then you're in control of the room, so go ahead and take it. Uh, even if you don't feel real comfortable with it, you got it. Not a knock, it's a tip, it's a help, okay? I promise. All right, keep going. Um, I think that the virtue standard or approach of ethics is to do like what they're showing or you or whatever they're like, what they're showing because um, I write down that it's like the virtue sign is like the development of the community, whatever you might say. because they are like. Holding this information from everybody, but they're trying to, they're trying to help. I mean, it's not that they're not trying to help the people that are in the hospital, and like in the clip that they're in the hospital now, but like, they are kind of stuck because they're yeah. not giving money, but they still want to help other people because they, it doesn't mean that after that six months they didn't get money for the treatment, but it's kind of like, Did they? Did they get the money? No, it said in six to twelve months. Yeah, but did they end up getting it? Do you know? No. We don't. They didn't get it. Okay. But they didn't but, know but that. They didn't know that. And that's they okay. didn't know that that was going to happen. So what you're saying is right. That's what the perception at that moment when we're talking about when they come together and agree that this is the approach they're going to use. That's definitely it. I, I don't. I don't disagree. So they were trying to act like they were making a comment. 
around those people to provide opportunities they didn't have before. Yeah, I think that right. that's actually made. I think he actually says that. They were treating them like they were doing them a favor. Yeah, doing them a favor. Yeah. I mean, totally hollow. And, like, we want it to be equal. Exactly, yeah, no, absolutely. Really, you're saying, well, you guys might not work the same way as white people do, so we need to study that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, we're all humans. Our bodies work the same way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, there, I'm, I'm not the teacher, I'm just... Oh, I thought you were... No. Uh, I mean, so, the common good approach. Remember when we said at the end that we want the full flourishing of society? The end of, of, of saying, hey, well, the reason why we're going to lie to these people is because in the end, it's going to help the entire community. Eventually, there's going to be progress. I mean, it's not real. I mean, nobody in their really their right mind thinks that mm -hmm. unless you're pursuing something. And we know... Dr. Brodus is concerned about himself because he says, hey, is my name going to be on the, the report? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, okay, cool, right? So there's something else that's there um, for him. But I think there's an idea that, hey, if we, if we do this, there's going to be a benefit eventually for the community, for the African-American community, which is that idea of the common well, I was going to say, didn't in the like, book it say something that they needed to do this about treatment to get like um, pure results? Yeah, pure results. <laughs> Was that just a lie? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Because I was like... That overtly that? racist. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> You're saying that they're, they're, they might work differently. I was just trying to see. No, yeah, it's good. But they didn't really have another option. No. So the option was do nothing and get nothing out of it or do what they want and maybe get funding, which they never did, but they didn't know that. I think right. the nurse didn't want to go along with it. No, yeah, none of them funny. really did. <laughs> they were given one choice. And there they was tried no... to sugarcoat it by saying, well, we're going to give them Advil, or not Advil, but they're yeah. going to give them medicine yeah. so they're going to feel better, but some, not. Some aspirin, and some she mercury rubs. Like, she was not good. Like, 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 but they withheld it. Yep. Oh, they did. Absolutely. Which is crazy because actually probably the combined amount of money that would have taken for all the other treatments and housing them, just give them penicillin. Let them go home and get the penicillin. Yeah. 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 Kelly, do you want to ask your second question? Yes. Uh, at the end of the clip, Dr. Burns tells his patient that he's given the medicine that will make him better. Um, was it ethical for Dr. Burns to tell the patient he would receive the treatment? Oh, he lied and his butt off. Come back to the why question again. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to just like speak it out of my hand, but like, I think that it would have been more, like, now that we know what ethics or ethical means, like, I feel like it would have been more ethical just to tell him maybe so he can make his own choice if he wants to stay there and waste his time. What ethical like, standard is that? Well, the, I guess the, what it is that the things are just. No. The, right. the rights. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, the rights concept that they have the rights for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think he had to lie quite as profusely as he did, like, and make it such a big deal, like, Miss Evers, you better back me up on everything that I'm saying. Um, I don't think he had to make it that big of an emphasis like everything's going to be fine you need to trust me like i don't know if i necessarily think that he should have asked his permission i don't know how many people they needed to study i don't know if it would have been an option for them to in statistics you would have had to have a lot of people yeah and so okay. yeah because if not you have such a small amount it's, that it's not going to matter a whole lot there was just his argument that if you tell them and they go away and the study ends, that's that's legit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it's right, but it's it's super legit, right? Sample size and all of that that goes on. I mean, but maybe some but some people ethically would have taken the risk for but the greater good. But would have enough? Maybe I don't know. I, I don't know if I could. I, my problem is I actually blame Nurse Evers more than I blame Dr. Gross. Because Dr. Brodus comes out of the, the Capitol building knowing what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. he, he knows. 
Nurse Edwards starts off as, you know, righteous, like if you will. Because we don't know the rest. And, well, I mean, I thought the, I can't remember if your clip goes into, I watched the whole thing, but the, the she, you know, she's talking to her love interest. Was his name like Clark or, or uh, everybody? Um, Who's the actor? I can't think of the name of the actor. I know, but I know him. Um, but she's talking, and I always ask the question, like, do you think that her changing makes her worse? Because doesn't she change? Well, I th- for the same reason that he does. Yeah, though, I feel it's like for the greater the op- the other option is doing nothing and letting them die, which is another reason why I think that some people might take the risk of doing the study because their to- their choice is regardless. no treatment or no treatment if they don't. They might survive the whole study and get the treatment eventually. I don't know if it's the same one. Um, and the reason why I say that is, who picked who picked the people? The white people? No, the, the black people. Who went, who went and found these people? Oh, I don't Nurse know. Nurse Evers did. Okay. Um, would the people that she picked by themselves and where they lived would they have had enough money for the medicine? No. I'm talking about the. I'm not talking about the uh, penicillin. Would they have had three square meals a day? No. Would they have had a place to sleep like that? No. Would they were checked up? Would they have the mercury reps? No. Which, by the way, from what I understand, gave a lot of relief for the pain that syphilis causes. Right. Okay. So would they have had all those things? So from her point of view, and I'm, I'm trying to play both sides here because yeah. I, I don't know the answer to this. There was an obligation that she felt bound to. I don't know if she actually changed her ethical standards, but she just basically shut it off. Like, I'm gonna go help these people because I'm the one that's responsible for them. Because I'm the one who brought them in. I'm the one who told them that they were going to get all this. I kind of felt like she was stuck in, in that spot. I also asked the question that's important. What kind of power did nurse ever have? None. Almost none. She is a black, a black woman, woman in the South in the 30s. And if you ask, go back and, and, and listen to the dialogue that she has with her boyfriend. What job is she going to have in Chicago if she leaves this profession in the South? So I, I feel like your definition of power is like, it depends on what, like, yeah, maybe like the power in like general, but like she had the power to stop and tell people. I don't know if that's, that's true. I don't know if that's true because in the situation, could she really stand up and do, I mean, we, anybody can do anything. She could have ruined it for right. them, yeah. yeah. She could have said, hey, you're actually not getting treatment. Uh, you should probably go to right. or so it's, whatever. It's like but that people. would have been the end of that. Thing. Yeah, but like she had the power to do yeah. it. She had the ability, ability to do it, not the power. And that's the difference. We all have the right. I have the right to kill myself. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm not trying to be, be weird about it. I have the, everybody has the right. They could end their life in any time. Can you do it? Yeah. Would you do it? <laughs> and, and, I'm not, and I'm not asking to get people to do it. I'm trying to, try to get you to understand something. In Nazi Germany, I have the ability to tell Hitler no. I have the ability to, but there are consequences to those actions. When we talk about power, you're talking about the ability to do something and then live through those consequences. Well, and she could. Well, that's what I just got in asking you. What was she going to be if she wasn't going to be a nurse and she did this? What was it going to be? I don't know. She was going to be a house servant. Oh, yeah. In Chicago, she was going to lose out on every bit of her professional uh, job, and she was going to go have to live and work in someone's house as a house servant. i got to be honest with you. With those things, those, those kinds of choices limit the power I have. It's like the idea that uh, between someone, why do people get in trouble in a business when they're a CEO and they violate somebody down here who could have said no, but they were compelled to say yes because of the power distribution between the person that's in power versus themselves. Have you guys heard of, the, of stuff like this? I mean, you know, what was like the first that. part of the question? So the yeah, idea is that in a situation, if someone who has power over your job, your life, everything else, and says, you will do this, 
whatever it is, you're going to do this. And if you don't do it, I'm going to fire you. I've left jobs over that. That limits your power. When they talk about this in court, it talks about who has power, who doesn't have power. We all have the right to make decisions. But it's actually the power structure that ends up changing that. Right? It puts a lot of influence, the consequences that are involved in this. Um, if I got anything out of law school, this is it, right? The understanding of power. I don't know in this case if Nurse Evers really had a choice. And what I mean by that, she could act any which way she wanted to, but for her entire life, it was really going to be difficult for her to stand up and do the right thing. Now, we want to be as leaders, we want to do this. Right? Even when the law says to do something that we know is bad, we want to stand up against us, yes? But there's a big difference between this is what we should do and this is what I'm going to do. We all have choices. That's why you don't see everybody standing up against tyrants. That's why you don't see everybody standing up against whatever the case may be, right? Because am I going to make the decision and what are the consequences? What's the power dynamic in there? And all I'm trying to say with, with Nurse Evers is the power dynamic for her, she has almost no power at all. She can make all the choices in the world, but she's, I mean, reality is going to destroy her life. So what's she going to do? This is why I kind of come back off of this because normally I'm pretty hard against her because I'm like, how can you do this to your own people? Right? How could you do this? It didn't go on for five years or 10 years. This went all in the 1970s. How could you do this? But then I come back and say, well, what, what did she have? Yeah. You know who had more power than she did and should have done something? Dr. Bros. I thought he was going to fight for it. I really did. I didn't think he was just going to be like, well, but then, what can like, you do? They gave him two, again, they gave him two options, though. Like, you either do this and then we might give you stuff, or you don't, and you're done. Right. right. I just so, thought he I would mean, fight more after yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't think he'd just be like, "Okay, we're gonna do exactly what these white people say." Yeah, it was it was it was really bad. That's why when I say when he coming, he's coming down the stairs, or, and he looks back at the guy and, he's, and he says, "Is my name still gonna be on?" He was or, mad. Or he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Okay," and I was like, "Oh." Yeah. Well, he I said like, "Why?" Well, he's like, "The." Something, something. I almost didn't even project. That. And he was like, the Tassib, the project. Well, exactly. Like, Is that his like, name? Like, that's the name. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, that's that's a part that when I when I get to, that's very, very, very difficult for me. Um, all right, we're going to switch gears. We've already talked about the actual frameworks. So go ahead and start in asking the questions you do not have to do the background. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, which ethical standard do you use most often? Uh, Anybody else? Not answering isn't going to make time go quicker. This. Okay. I was. I tried to do comedy again because I feel like you know. Is probably virtue based. 
Which one? Virtue. Virtue. Virtue base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was thinking, Carolyn, do you want to ask? Okay. Michaela, do you want to ask your second question? Uh, my second question was how do you choose which ethical standard do, that you use and why do you, why, why do you choose to like choose it that way? Like how do you What's the process? Justify? Yes, yes, process. So I um my answer to the first question was going to be either utilitarian or the rights approach, which because of different situations. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would use the, the rights approach in a, when the situation has to do with life or death. I would not agree with Dr. Bose's decision not to give in, not to get informed consent when, in regards to the study. Um, but in a lot of cases, hold on. In a lot of cases, it's better to make the decision that benefits the majority if the alternative means failure for the group as a whole. So I was kind of torn on that as well. Anybody else? I just wrote like, how did you choose which ethical standard to use? The book, the book says, define the moral issue. Like the, this document says, define what the moral issue is first. Um, and then you have to give certain considerations and you have to run through each one of those considerations. Maybe that you're right or that you're wrong. So a decision you can live with is a huge one. And then you always have to come back and assess what that is. Go back in and read the end of this document for the process because that's going to help answer some of the questions in the study guide. So you probably want to make sure you know what that process is because if we are if we are diametrically opposed to one another in two different ethical standards, how do we come together to make the choice of what is actually right? Because isn't that really what happens to Republicans and Democrats on a lot of issues? It's where they are ethically. Right? If you're talking about people who are opposite of one another, that's a big deal. Okay. I was just going to say, like, what I wrote down when I was reading it, at the end it said something about recognizing the issue, like the ethical issue, like you said, like, people would give it. And then it says, give the facts and then evaluate alternative actions for various ethical perspectives. And then, then make a decision, then test it. Yep. That's what it said at the end. Yep, to go through and test it at the end. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, like, Act on it. Real quick, last one. Okay, so this is about the placebo and like trying to wrap that whole ethical thing. So I would go with the right to justice and no, the right to justice because when they do experiment, you're technically supposed to say, oh, we will have placebo a control group and experience this. But you don't say who, and it can also be non biased. So the person giving it might not. So this is why like, I can fully agree when he said, oh, I'm getting medicine, and he thought he was being treated, but he didn't know he even, he even had it. Because they didn't tell him what was going on, and you're supposed to know, but you're not supposed to know like, if you receive medicine or not, you're just supposed to consent. Yeah, follow the pattern for sure of that. I know it's time to go, folks. Uh, go ahead and pass your uh, tags around. Good discussion today. Hopefully you got something out of it when it came to ethics. Thank you, leaders.